Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I am the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, elder candidate at Redeemer Fellowship. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. What are you doing? Um, uh, well, you know what I'm doing. I know you're, you're, you're staring at your phone. You've yeah. got your phone. I got we're, my phone. We're all set up to record. We're, we're up here. I'm and here. And you've I'm got present. your phone propped up against your water bottle like you're yeah. going to drink that. And, I'm going to drink uh, water. Oh, uh, okay. You're you know drink I drink water. water. I yeah, love water. Not tonight. No, not tonight. Yeah, I didn't think so. So you've got your phone. We're trying to record. We're trying to be focused. We want to have mm-hmm. a good conversation here, but you're staring at your phone. Why don't you tell everybody why you're staring at your phone? Well, I just discovered Uber Eats. Mm-hmm. And I just discovered that uh, you know Uber Eats will deliver Beef Shack. That's that's just so you, just, you need to learn self control, son. But you need wait, to be a little more disciplined. Um, this is just dumb. We're not, trying. How are we going to react? If you if you have to eat while we're recording, it's going to mess up. So the wait whole a flow. second. Are 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 you not eating anything? No, man. I'm on point now. Like, oh. I'm eating really healthy. Oh, so I've been that, eating. Listen, that second Italian I, beef isn't yours. I wouldn't have any. I don't know what's on your phone. I can't see that. Oh, okay. So you yeah. plan on not eating that that second you Italian know, I beef? I can't say what I'm going to do in the future. Well, but I mean, the fact that to... you had the phone, your my phone in your hand and was right. placing the order. I was helping you choose things that I thought you might enjoy. Well, no, but you, you chose things that I you enjoyed. Pay, I didn't pay for anything. And then I chose what I would enjoy. Well, I thought you might like a little variety. So I, I got you a, an Italian beef mm. uh, with uh, hot peppers. Yeah, which is good. But I think you also added extra awesomeness. I did in the notes section. I said... Uh, <laughs> Please add extra awesomeness. <laughs> Which means it's just going to be wet. So what's going to happen? They're going to they're going to yeah, so we gonna might pull stop. up. We're I know we, we stop might the stop recording. We're going to stop the recording. Okay. We'll stop the recording. We'll jump back then on. Then we have to eat. Then we can't record while we're eating. Yeah, it'd be, be gross. Be, no, it'd be gross. Nah, I'd be fine. People be fine. Don't worry about it. But gross. you know what? You know what else is special? We're celebrating something today, Joe. What are we celebrating? Uber Eats. And and uh, I don't know. What are we celebrating? It's our 150th episode. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, I think we're episode one fifty. Okay, nobody cares. Wow, like it was. This so, is not a big deal. So anticlimactic. One hundred and fifty. Yeah, one hundred fifty. All right, listen. When we're at fifteen hundred, then come and talk to me. Oh, I'm just saying, that. like, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, mm, really, Pinocchio. Remember? No, the one that uh, we were on. Remember, we Melrose were Park. The, we were on. I, for, I, I, we, <laughs> we were on for their, uh, their Jerry Bridges. Oh, I hate you. I don't know so what you're much. talking about. Remember, we were on somebody else's hundred fiftieth. Yeah. No. Yes, we were. Uh, Reform Pub, Pubcast, Pubcast. Remember, we we were on their. 150th? Oh yeah, they pubbed out. Yeah, they're not doing. <laughs> they're not doing it anymore. They're you gone. Can't say it like that. That's what they. What do you want me to say? They did the, not do it. They pubbed out. They pubbed out. All right. Well, they're taking a high an, an, an indefinite hiatus. Mm, okay. Hey, you know what? What? Less. We love you. We love your documentary. And Make Tanner, more and love you. Uh, and who? Tanner. Who's Less that? and Tanner. No idea what you're talking about. Anyway, Bro, um, so much shade. What are you talking about? <laughs> so much shade. I don't even know what you're talking. All I'm, nobody cares. We need to talk about what we're going to talk about. What are we right, talking about? We're going to talk about churches giving and to the their church. Money. Yep, churches giving and to their money. church. Giving to, giving the, to church. the church. I hate you. Everybody hates you. You're, you're like you're ruining episode. Dude, I'm amped because you know why? Why are you amped? Because Uber eats <laughs> beef. Shack. Gotta get beef shack. <laughs> All right, so we actually got an email in or uh, some kind of message over the internet, mm-hmm. and somebody asked us to please address the issue of giving to the church. Yeah. You know, should you take up an offering? Uh, is it biblical? How is the, what's the best practice and, yeah, and all yeah. that stuff? And so we thought, well, why don't we just talk about big picture here? Like, uh, are we going to talk about churches and their money? Okay. People don't like this topic. No, they're pretty uncomfortable with it. Yeah. I, I, I To be honest, I'll preach about anything. I don't care. I really don't like preaching about money. <laughs> no one does. And I think I part like of it is because there's so many bad examples out there, right? Yeah. There's so many bad examples of, I mean, you got the Crefofo Dalla. Yeah. Or we don't, Creflo Dalla. I'm yeah, the you're the Crefofo Dalla. I'm the Crefofo Dalla. But I mean, you got so many bad examples. Yeah. I mean, even the, the professing the billion dollar flow. Yeah. You know, like. Just, well, you have that, and then you just have like controlling non-transparent yes. pastors and elders who take money and do what they want with it without any accountability. Yeah, just hiding things within their And their your budget. church is going into crazy debt. Um, and then, you know, it, people getting really stressed out and the church not being able to function well because yeah. of it. We've seen this stuff all the time. And so, yeah, I, and I, I'm uncomfortable talking about or preaching about money, though I'll do it. Yeah. And I have done it. I'm uncomfortable preaching about it because I don't want people to think I'm one of those guys. That I'm just out for their money, especially visit. Like I know our people aren't going to think that. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. Oh, the newcomers. They're going to their first time here. Like, dude's preaching about money. Exactly. So it makes me uncomfortable. Bad churches, bad practices, and you know assumptions that people make. But why don't we just start off with the like the most basic thing? Churches tend to take up an offering, right? Yep. They oh, pass yeah, the plate. Pass that plate, or 
the box or the bag. Some people, some people don't have. Oh, that's they, so, they that have one a, bag thing, that silk bag. It's like a magic yeah, bag. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's like a magic bag. Yeah, your money goes in and poof, it's gone. It is gone. Yeah, it's gone. It goes to the 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 pastor's Bentley or whatever. Oh, bro. What? No, you're not a pastor. I wasn't talking about you. I know, but still, you're an elder candidate. <laughs> hey, um, so all right, what do? Why? Where do? Where, is there biblical justification? That's the question. Is there biblical justification yeah. for churches taking an offering, like making it a, a formal thing that the church does, passing the plate? Well, I mean, you look at 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. Now, concerning the collection for the saints. Oh, mm-hmm. it kind of says it right there, actually. <laughs> okay, go ahead. As I directed the churches of Galatia, so you also are to do. Mm-hmm. On the first day of every week. Oh, that's you- Sunday. Huh. huh. That's weird. Collection for that Each Sunday? of you is to put something aside oh. and store it up. As he may prosper, okay. so that there will be no collecting when I come. So, so Paul's writing to the jacked up Corinthian church, yeah, who don't do a lot right, and um, and he's reminding them. He's like, hey, remember, uh, you know, you're going to be giving a gift, a financial gift to me when I get there, correct? For the for the you know the work of the ministry. So make sure that you're doing this regularly. We don't want to try and drum it all up together when I get there. That's right. You know, that's that ain't right. gonna work. That's right. You gotta play. He's 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 kind of like you. He's like organized. He's telling people, "I gotta get your stuff in order." Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You I gotta, like that. I mean, he's it's fiscal responsibility. Fiscal responsibility. That's it. Fofo responsibility. Fofo, fofo fiscality. All right. It's funny because you brought up First Corinthians, and I was thinking about Second Corinthians, uh, chapter nine, verses five and seven, where Paul says, "So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead to you and arrange in advance for the gift you have promised." so that it may be ready as a willing gift and not as an exaction. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Now, here's the key verse for me. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, yes. not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So we we know that the early church gathered on the first day of the week. We know that they called that the Lord's Day. Yeah. We know that they sang songs on that week. There was preaching of the word and the reading of the word. Their prayers were offered up. There was prophesying, which is just another form of preaching, guys. Don't get crazy. And uh, they took up an offering. And, and, and what it says both here, right, is that as you prosper— be sure yep. to give. So don't go into debt to do this. Don't give us your last 50 bucks and God's going to promise to give you 500 or something like that. Yeah, no. Um, no. As you have uh, really decided in your own heart, give without compulsion. But don't give reluctantly. Give happily. Like that's, these are pretty simple biblical. Like there's not a whole, the church takes up offerings. It's been doing this for 2,000 years. Exactly. It's not, if there's not like, it, there's no big secret behind it. There's right. no big, uh, I, I, I love how you said it there, right? What they've decided in their heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, because I think the bad examples we've seen right. have been kind of forcing this down your 10%, throat. Ten percent, yo. Oh, ten to ten, fifteen. Ten, ten yeah. to fifteen. Ten is starter. That's like baby steps. Oh yeah. You yeah. Start it as you grow in your in, it's in a, your faith. It's a, it's a tithe, son. That's right. And so, uh, so I think really that that sense of compulsion where people are forced into it, yeah, and almost uh, guilt tripped. You oh, know, for sure. And so, I mean, how about like. Let's let's stop here for a second. Okay, oh, because oh, it's Uber here. No, the, oh, no okay. it's not that. All right. But I'm talking about like so when we say okay, it's not it's not supposed to be under compulsion, right. but even part of our membership covenant yep. is hey, you're going to give towards the offering. So, so what's the difference between the two? You know yeah. what I mean? Because I can so, see someone saying, "Wait a second. Well, yeah, I, I think when, when you're looking at your church membership, what what we say is um, uh, what Paul says here. Uh, we're, you're not compelled. Uh, we don't want you to feel compelled to give. You're not compelled to give any certain amount. Um, however, it is our Christian responsibility to support the work of the ministry yeah. in our local gatherings. And so, whatever you decide in your heart is great. And uh, we want, but that we do believe that that should be whatever is for you sacrificial, right? Which I think means you should feel it. <laughs> If you don't notice you're giving, yeah, you're, yeah. it's probably not really that sacrificial. It'll also be joyful. Um, so, And it should be in accordance with your conscience. So we tell people when they're joining at Redeemer, uh, yes, uh, you are pledging to support this church financially. But that's literally all that we say. We don't tell them how much. We don't say 10%. No, we don't we say don't, 10 to 15 no, I know churches no. that ask for W-2s. No. For real. No. For real. Google it. No. Google it. Google it. Oh, right. Google it when you're, eating maybe, your, yeah. when you're eating your sandwich. Um, so yeah, I, I, so we want them to give, and I, I think it's like anything else. Like we want our people, um, to grow into maturity in every area of the Christian life. I want to grow in maturity, right? In yeah. every area of the Christian life. And so what are the things that Jesus talked about? What are the things that the apostles talk about? Well, they talk about praying. They talk about the reading of scripture. They talk about, um, evangelism. 
they talk about giving. Yeah. And uh, giving sacrificially. And so we actually do need to teach our people. If we have to teach them how to pray, we probably have to teach them how to give. How to oh, yeah, money. exactly. So I, I think all of that goes together in a, in, a way, in a good way. But I think we need to be careful how we present it to people mm-hmm. in the church because we don't want them to feel like we're putting the screws to them about the money. Exactly. Oh, is Uber here? Uh, I know. I've got a whole phone. One second. Hello? Excuse oh, jeez. Jimmy had to order... Jimmy had to order a special sandwich. He couldn't just order like an Italian beef. He had to order a combo because he can't just have an Italian beef or a sausage. He has to have a sausage beef combo. You can't just, he's got to make it complicated. And that's why this whole thing is being delayed. Right, what happened? You know who that was? That's that guy that uh, that was good friends with Les when Les yeah, came up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reggie. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they're out of combos. Yeah, I know. You have to get like weird. You can't just get like, you There's can't be satisfied thing. with a beef or you have to get both. I want sausage and beef. You can't just get one or the other. Why do you well, get well, I'm not going to beef shack for a salad. But you can get a beef. You but I'm going to get, get the beef. meat. Well, apparently, the, the, they got the meat. They can't meet your need. So okay. what happened? Okay. No, they're, so, they're, so they, we just I just substituted. That's all. Why did you say thank you? Huh? Oh, the guy threw in uh, some salads for us. And by salads, you mean something fried, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've established, I think, at least somewhat fairly, that the churches have historically taken up an offering. Yeah. Uh, at least biblically, we see that to be the case. Oh, but, okay, so why do we do it? What, why do we take up an offering? What's it used for? What is, is it? Well, I mean, it's supposed to be used for the mission of the church, right? Like to make disciples. It's supposed to be advancing uh, or proclaiming the gospel, right? Right. Right. And so uh, if it's not doing that, then your church is, I think, doing it wrong, doing it wrong. I think that's fair to say. Now, just because you can't see how it is all working out in that way doesn't mean that your church is doing it wrong. But uh, you should be free to ask questions and to find out exactly where that money uh, is going in your church. So um, let's be more specific. When when people give money to a church. Yeah. What is that money typically going toward in a, I think, a healthy, you know, evangelical New Testament kind of church. Well, I, I think it's going towards staff. I mean, you got to, you got to, there's pastoral staff, there's administrative staff. I mean, there's, there's people that are uh, focusing mm-hmm. on, on the work of the church yeah. that, I mean, that's, that's what God has called them to do. And so, yeah, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah you're taken care of. Everybody from, you know, pastors to janitors. Some yep. churches have, you know, janitors. Uh, we have a janitor? Uh, we have a cleaning company. Yeah, yeah. a cleaning company comes in. Yeah. So, you know, so you're, you're paying for those things, um, and that is, you know, connected. Some of that's connected to the fact of, of a facility. Yeah. Right? So you have to pay yeah, up, for a up, keep, Upkeep of the so facility, yep. Even So even if you don't own a building, you still got to pay for the facility, whether that you're renting yep. or whatever, unless you're a house church, um, in which case you may need to pay for insurance if you're, uh, you know, a recognized, uh, you know, church in any sense. So there's always like, money that's going to be involved for some of those basic things. Yeah. Obviously, we need for staff, but there's also money that goes into like stuff like corporate worship. Yeah, things like the hymnals, the chairs. Uh, I'm trying to even think like communion supplies. That's all part of that, right? Instruments, instruments. Uh, yeah, people may want sound to equipment, play. Yeah. Uh, projector screen. So, like this, as simple as as it might be, or as big uh, as it might be, uh, there is a cost involved in that. Uh, what else do you think of when you think of the stuff that churches spend their money on that is appropriate? Well, I mean, we t- we kind of already talked about facility, you know. So, like, if you're, uh, I'm even thinking like if you're renting. Right, like outside of if you own it, but you know, renting facilities, but then missions and church planting, right? So money that can be going towards uh, other ministries outside of the church, other people that are proclaiming the gospel, and other churches that are are getting set up. Right. Yeah. So your church should not be only taking care of itself. I think every church should be helping as much yeah. as possible. And there are, might be seasons where they can't. Maybe it's a brand new church plant yeah, yeah. or there's a church in a dire situation. But other ch- churches should be helping other churches and missionaries and missions and all of that. Uh, how about like mercy ministries? Like there are churches that, um, you know, look outward uh, and they say like, well, what are some things that we could be doing uh, that would be, you know, works of mercy uh, in the church and and beyond the church, like that's the sort of a thing that you know money would be going towards. Can you can you think of any examples? I mean, I'm thinking of like clothes closet, you mm-hmm. know, those kind of things, or not even like I'm, I'm, that's for us kind of an in house mercy ministry, but even helping out like a, a local soup kitchen, right? right? Like 
Lazarus house. Right. right? So money could be given to that. Yep. Um, and, and that relates to like the whole benevolence idea, right? So like, you know, mercy ministry, that's totally in house. Uh, not even for us, benevolence is not totally in house. Um, but uh, why don't you explain to people what benevolence, a benevolence ministry is? Yeah. I mean, I think there's, there's times where uh, people within the congregation uh, go through seasons of um, where maybe they just, there's a little bit extra help needed. Right. right. There could be uh, a loss of a job. Yep. Um, there could be surgical issues, yeah. like medical issues. Um, there's all kinds of things. Or but even even also, like I'm trying to think of, uh, there might be people that they're financially and, and fiscally responsible. Uh, they're paying all their bills. But hey, wait a second. There's there's an issue that came up within their marriage. And so, the, you know, they want to, like counseling and things like yeah. that. And so I think benevolence helps in that uh, uh, to help with those, yeah. those funds. The money that you give to your church, a, a, a good portion of that will go towards meeting the needs of other people in that congregation. Yeah. And so that's, that's why you, you churches ought to have some sort of, uh, you know, formalized benevolence ministry. And we even see that in scripture, right? In like Acts chapter four, uh, where it says in verse 34, there was not a needy person among them, among this church, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. No, this is not socialism or communism, but this is mm-hmm. the church uh, agreeing willfully, willingly to uh, pool their resources in order to take care of each other. So, um, yeah, I think when we're talking about you know doing uh, you know, co- a collection on Sunday morning, yeah, yeah. It, it needs to be for the right things. That's and right. there needs to be checks and balances. By the way, this is why. Our budget is fully transparent at Redeemer, and it is something that is voted on by the entire membership. Wait a second. Do Baptists do that? Uh, yeah, actually, historically, they do, unless they get too big for their britches. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people don't like to do that. Like, we people know how much I make. They don't just know how much goes towards staff. It's not mm-hmm. it's like it says staff, and then everybody that's on the staff is kind of lumped, lumped in, in there. Yeah. Together, so nobody knows what's going on. We don't do that. Uh, that'd be, that'd be making me more comfortable. Probably like that way people aren't like, I, yeah, you don't want everybody knowing you're 170 K. Hey man, I'm worth it. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) oh, over here. Oh, it's coming. All right. Is it oh, close? yeah. I think before we get to, uh, right, you know, churches, how they take up the collection, we need to go to the front door All right, go get and it. make our collection. Okay. Now listen, some of these fools don't have, uh, Italian beef. Right, you leave you leave the Chicago area. Yep. You don't have now. If you're lucky, you're on the East Coast and you can get like Philly cheesesteak or something like that. But in Chicago, we got Italian beef. Now, did you get Italian beef? Yep. With cheese on garlic bread. Yep. So I just went with the traditional Italian beef with jardinera sauce, which is like hot peppers. Uh huh. Oh my gosh, this is one juicy mess. They dip it in the beef au jus. You got more hot peppers than me. Oh, yeah. That was that awesome. Yep. That's the extra awesomeness. Mm-hmm. Is it on the receipt? Look like you're sweating from the hot peppers. No, they're not You that sure hot. they ain't that hot? No, they're not hot. That's why I'm surprised no, by I you. Eat, I'm not sweating. I eat hot peppers. These are not hot. Are you sure? I see a little bit of perspiration. On. Those are tears. They're what? Tears of joy. <laughs> right, that lunch was... Uh, that was it lunch or dinner? Dinner. It's late. But that was needed. Oh, we I feel fading. good. We, were, we had a long elders meeting. Yep. And uh, uh, and then we were working out uh, profusely. Well, I did actually. Too. Well, I, that, I, mentally we were that working was, out. Yes, we were. We were mentally working out. So, so I felt like we deserved it. That was really good. Um, man, that was a really good idea. All right. So to get back to it, mm-hmm. um, I think <laughs> I think where we, were, did we leave off. I, okay, we left off on. You actually, we left off on transparency when it comes to the budget. Yeah, we disclose everything. Yeah. So, you know, who makes what, and then the church votes on it. Um, it's put together. It's labored over by um, some of the elders, and then the elders vote together to say, yes, we want to yep. present it to the body. But the body gets to say yes or no. And the body can even, like, address issues in there and all of that. And which we've had, they said, hey, why don't, you know. Joe should be making a lot more money. That's what they usually say. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard They're like, that. why does Joe make so little money? Uh, no, no. You know, pretty- James McDonald makes a whole lot more than Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he needs well, to make that James true. McDonald money. No, That's no, what he, they not, say. Not one person has no. said, <laughs> <laughs> Joe needs to make James McDonald money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't, that's, don't call people out, dude. That's not cool. Got to make that harvest money. <laughs> 
But maybe you should start a dating app, and maybe that'll oh, that'll increase it. your that'll it. increase your revenue streams. <laughs> okay, so we take up an offering. Yes. Now there are different ways to take up an offering. You know, now like a lot of people when they think of taking up the offering, they think of passing the plate. Yeah, yeah, the, the, pass the plate or the magic bag. The magic bag. Where right. Poof. What else do they do? Uh, giving kiosk. They have the giving kiosk. Now, that, that, you, you're talking about the one in the back, right? Like where you go in the back, you just kind of put it in the box. Yeah, and basically, then you... it's, uh, what is it? It's square yep. all, attached to uh, an iPad, and you just, boop, boop, you just slide your card through. I don't even know what you're talking about. I wasn't even thinking that. I was yeah. thinking like there's a box in the back. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, that is what we've said, right? We said pass the play, box in the we back. We haven't talked about the boxes in the back yet. Gotcha. That's. I thought that's what a giving kiosk was. Oh no, no, giving kiosk is an electronic giving station. What? And yeah, a lot of churches do that now. Um, I guess because people who really carries don't, checks. Yeah, you know, you're right. Who or, or <laughs> I never carry checks. Of course not. You're actually, a man. I, actually, Men don't carry. No, women I'm carry pretty, checks. I'm pretty Men sure do not my family, checks. like our family checkbook, is somewhere in the sanctuary. Oh yeah. In fact, I have seen you leave it here. Yeah, you're blind. We leave checkbook. it. We leave it yeah. in our safe. You know, we just leave it right down there because yeah, you use the same seats all the time. Same seats. I, yeah. Here's the thing. Um, we only have checkbooks for church. That's it. Because everything else is paid online. Yeah. So some places have uh, giving kiosks, and um, other other people have online giving. Online giving, which we online. now have, which is fantastic. Yep, we like the online giving. We'll talk about that. Uh, but then you mentioned boxes in the back. So there are some people that like the idea of instead of passing the plate where people feel pressured, um, they say, we really don't want to do that. We'd rather just have these boxes in the back. And like a little donation box, or even worse, boxes in the front. Come on up. Let's Come see. Come on what, up. Let's, let's see, see what you're. Mm. And if it's a big enough, you can coin, stay up front. If it's, if, it, if it's enough shekels, then you get a little prize. Well, you can stay up front in the lazy boy chair. Oh, do we have lazy boys in those chairs? In those churches? Some of them. All yeah. right. So um, <clears throat> here's the thing. Uh, what is best? That was what the email asked. Uh, which yeah. is the best practice? Well, our principle is number one: uh, the offering uh, to be taken up among the saints, was to be done on the Lord's Day when the church was together. So for us, that means it ought to be a part of our corporate worship. It ought to be yes. something that we're doing. This is an offering that we're making to God, um, and it's going to go to the church for the the cause of Christ and, and, and the work of the gospel ministry. So we want it to be a part. Now, <clears throat> some people... Uh, do it differently. You can have kiosks, yep. uh, but then it's kind of separated from the service. Other people have apps. There are apps that you can use on your phone to pay, boom, 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 right yep. when you're in the service. And, yep. and so, um, But the the big question that we got was, and that we have seen, we've had this question come up in Acts 29 and in other contexts, should you pass the plate or have a box in the back? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm even thinking what you're talking about here, Joe, about uh, it should be done on a Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Well, how about the online giving aspect then? Yes, yeah. technically that's not Sunday morning. That's right. So you're saying it's preferential. Yeah, but not it's not binding. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I think yeah. If if you know you're there was no other way to do it in the first century, right? Okay, there was yeah, no, fair there enough. They couldn't mail it in. They, yeah, they yeah. didn't have the post office. They didn't you know they didn't have the internet. I don't think. Um, <laughs> it, so yeah, so I think yeah, ideally, it ought to be a part of our corporate okay. worship, but. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's wrong to have it's the kiosks. A, I don't think right. it's wrong, but I just think. But your, like, but your main question is what's be, uh, maybe not what's better, what's preferred as far as passing the plate or box in the back. Yeah, this guy was asking like what's best, and I would say, well, um, I this it's not necessarily best. It's all depends on the church. Every church is different, but I can speak for our experience when we've done this. Um, and and for other churches, not every church. I've, I've heard of examples where it's gone the other way, but in general. People that pass the plate and decide they're going to go to boxes in the back see a decrease in giving. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter how they do it um, in, with the people that I'm thinking of and the churches that I'm thinking of. And then when they take it back to passing the plate, the giving goes back up. And then when you offer an, a digital component to it as well, yeah. meaning online giving or chaos giving, in addition to what you're doing there, what happens, Jimmy? Uh, it increases. Every time. Yeah. Every time. Now, I mean, you know, bear in mind some of your expenses go up because you're, you're yep. paying per transaction, all right. that fun stuff. But bottom line, it, the giving goes up. All right. So there, the Bible doesn't tell us how to do this. The Bible says that when the church gathered together, it was a part of their covenant community. They took up an offering. Mm-hmm. And because they did it on the Lord's Day, we like to do it on the Lord's Day. And then there are additional ways to do that as well. And you know what you want. Listen, if um, <clears throat> when the plate is coming around, 
and you don't have anything to put in there, uh, what you could do is you could actually uh, write down uh, a prayer request or yeah. a praise on a card and, and drop that in there for the people. We love to get that stuff. Yep. That's not uh, that's not a bad thing at all. So there's a lot of things you could put in that plate as it's coming around. Um, and it, it teach your kids. I mean, let your kids get involved in that stuff. Yeah. Like, let them drop, uh, you know. A shekel or two. Yeah. So then, Joe, what about, like, uh, should, like, a church be paying the pastor's salary? Like, you know, we're talking about budgets and we're talking about the, you know, that it should be going towards the mission of the church. And we mentioned staff. I mean, why is it important to be paying the pastor a salary? Because we got to get paid, yo. You got to get paid. <laughs> I need my jet, yo. <laughs> Okay, there's a lot of there's a lot of opinions about this. Um, should pastors be paid? Should they yeah. be a full time salaried position, or whatever or, it is? Yeah, should they just be bivocational, like right. the first century? Right, like some of the first. Yeah, century. some. <clears throat> here's the oh. thing. Here, here's the thing. Um, th- there are radically different, opposing, passionate views on this. So we'd like to speak about this dispassionately. Of course, it's easy for us to say because we are staff. Right? We get paid. We get paid uh, to do this. Like Jimmy, uh, very part time. He, you know, he's got a very full time job yep, yep. that he does, and he, he's able to give a, a lot of dedicated energy to this, but in a part time capacity. So um, here's here's the bottom line. Yes, we do believe that churches can and should pay pastors yeah. a salary uh, commensurate with the church's ability. Uh, and need for the pastors and it commensurate with the pastors um, <clears throat> say experience yeah. and ability and and all of that and a lot more goes into it but yes we do believe so and the reason we believe so is because we see this not just throughout church history but we do see the principle in scripture as well are for, you thinking of like oh go you, ahead. no you go ahead you well, I was thinking, are you thinking of first timothy five <sighs> yes that's what i was going to share go ahead <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain, and the laborer deserves his wages. Right. But so, I notice here, Joe, mm-hmm. it says, let the elders who rule well. Right. <clears throat> so why are we paying you? Uh, because uh, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching, you know. I know, but it says, mm-hmm. in, but they had to do that well. But I rule well. Through my preaching. My preaching rules, dude. Oh, <laughs> I think it drools. <laughs> oh. See, like it's so juvenile. No, that's why people tune out. Yeah, I know. That, that, that That's what happens. <clears throat> so, okay. Um, that's that's a really great passage. They're really, um, I, I think, as, as you dive into this passage, you look at the context, <clears throat> and you read other scholars who write on this passage, and I, I do think it's fairly clear, right? Um, the, the elders who rule well and those yeah. who labor in the the – the fundamental responsibilities of pastoral ministry uh, should be supported. They should be honored, and this does place it in an economic context uh, because it's taking a, a passage of Scripture from the Old Testament, essentially saying that the, saying that the labor deserves his wages. Yeah. Shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. So in other words, uh, the, the, the ox gets to eat uh, – from you know, while in, it's in the midst of its of its labors, in the midst of its work. So I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think <clears throat> I think we're not we're not saying for those that sense a call to bivocational ministry, we're not saying anything against that. Not at all. But I think what we're really trying to say though is that for uh, churches do need to take care of their pastoral staff. They need to make sure that the the uh, staff is. Uh, I think I'm trying to think of the. How do how do we say it here, Joe? Like uh, they should be making roughly eighty percent of the median. Would you, uh, would you agree with that? I would say they should be making the median. I mean, in general, depending on their experience, their age. Um, Fair enough. Their education. Yep, their education. So, in general, though, yeah, eighty percent or something like that. You uh, you you want to figure if if you they shouldn't be a pauper is really what it comes down to. They shouldn't have to worry about what's going. You know, uh, how to take care of their family, how to take care uh, of their bills, like. They should be free to focus on the needs right. of the church. If they're able to give, you know, 50 hours a week to the church, um, then that is their vocation yeah. and they need to be supported. And their support uh, shouldn't be minimal. Now, it shouldn't be maximum necessarily either, but you need to be able so to. So it shouldn't be McDonald'ness? Mm, stop mm. it. You're going to get in so much trouble. Why? Who cares? Here's this thing. He listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm thinking about is. You know, can a a minister 
live in a particular area like everybody else in that area. Yeah. So because what you want, you want your your leadership to uh, live among the people and to live uh, the kind of generous life that uh, that would be typical or normal or at least or expected in their culture. So, yeah, they need to be making something in the range of what the normal household or normal yeah. individual uh, income should be. So I, I think they got to take a lot of those things into consideration. And there are, of course, exceptions to the rules and all of that. But that's that tends to be how we think about it. And I, there's another passage um, in First Corinthians chapter nine, uh, verses eight through eleven, where Paul says, "Do I say these things on human authority? Does not the law say the same thing? Sound familiar? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox when it trains out the bread. Is it for oxen that God is concerned? Does he not certainly speak for our sake? It was written for our sake because the plowman should plow in hope and the thresher thresh in hope of sharing in the crop. If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? That's pretty clear. You may not like it, but I feel like that is pretty clear that pastors can be paid and should be paid commensurately uh, for their ministry. So bivocational, great. Uh, listen, I listen. I know what it is to pastor a church and to get paid a very low salary because the church simply didn't have it yeah, to at give. That point, when it started and as off, soon yeah. as the, and I've never asked for a raise or anything like that. But as soon as the church grew to the point where they could pay me more, they said we want to pay you more, and mm-hmm. then they just they adjusted my salary to a very uh, appropriate uh, amount. Hundred and fifty thousand after taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just want to make sure everyone's clear on that. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't think it's a good idea for us to talk about money and giving to the church yeah. and how she would be giving and taking up the offering and all that stuff without getting practical here, right? It is doctrine and devotion. devotion. So, uh, but we're not that smart, so we're going to steal from League and Duncan, <laughs> Doctor D. Doctor D. That's right. So Doctor D is a you know modern day. I don't want to say hero, but we'll call baller, right? We would say like we don't have he, heroes, we have ballers that we respect. Exactly. I mean, he's like a Ah, uh, he's like the poor man's Joe Thorne. No, he would be the rich man's Joe Thorne. No, I tried making you look better, Joe. No, you can't. I, I can't just tried making you look he's better. He's got hair. He's, I just, I just, he's like I 80 you years better. old and he's got dark, thick you. hair. I just tried helping you. Okay, don't help me. I'm just trying to help you. So Legan Duncan, and we'll link to this in the show notes, Legan Duncan um, has a has a piece on giving, and uh, he gives 10 principles for Christian giving that I think are really good. We're just going to run through them real quick and All encourage right. you guys to be giving to your local churches uh, and giving generously in general. Jimmy, you want us to kick it off? Sure. Uh, the Lord Jesus expects and requires us to give. I mean, we're called right there. We're called to give. Jesus said to his disciples, when you give, not if you give. We're thinking right. of Matthew 6. Too. Right, right. So we we see it in, you know, Paul's we, Paul's we, writing. Jesus we certainly. See what Jesus is telling us. All right, really good. So yeah, it, it is a good thing, and you're supposed to do it. How about this? Number two, uh, Doctor D says the Lord Jesus wants us to give for the right reasons. Yeah. Right. So it's not to be admired. It's not to be loved. It's not to be seen as generous. We give why? Uh, for the glory of God and for the good of His people. That's why we do it. That should be our motives or reasons for doing this. Third, the Lord Jesus wants us to practice benevolent or charitable giving. Jesus said, when you give to the poor. Right. So helping out those in need. You want to be seeking out others flourishing. You want to uh, uh, try to support and care because uh, you might at some point as well be in a time of need and you would hope others would be charitable right. with you. And so part of that is when you give to a healthy church, they you are doing it through them to help those who are disadvantaged. Yeah. But you should also, we should all also look for opportunities to help those who are in need. I love that, man. Uh, number four, D says, the Lord Jesus reminds us that our giving is ultimately to the all-seeing Heavenly Father. So, and he talks about this in Matthew 6, um, that when we give, in secret, the, it's it's God the Father yeah. who sees yeah. what we're doing. So really, when when you this is like uh, what Paul says, like when you work, you're working for Jesus. You're not just working for your employer. You're ultimately working for Jesus. So you give 100. percent Here, when we give, we are ultimately giving. Even if you're handing money to a homeless guy, you are giving to your heavenly Father. That ought to be something that you keep in mind as you're thinking about will you or won't you give. Along with that point, uh, Doctor Delicious uh, says number five. The Bible teaches that Christian giving is an act of worship. Yeah, it is. Right? Like it's something, uh, like in 1 Corinthians 16, too. On the yeah. first day of every week, each one of you is to put aside and save. So, yeah, on, on the Lord's Day, as you come together, uh, lay it aside and give. 
Yeah. Um, he also has uh, number six as uh, the Bible teaches that a Christian giving, that uh, Christian giving should be done in light of the incarnation. Oh, that's good. And I'm going to read what he says here because I think it's important. Many Christians argue about whether the tithe, 10% of our income, is still the standard for our giving to the church. Disputants usually want to show that less than 10% is fine. Paul scuttles the whole debate in one verse. He says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Christ's self-giving is now the standard for our giving. So we we look to Jesus as the one who modeled what sacrificial giving looks like um, and how we ought to be giving. When we give, we're giving because we're followers of Jesus. That's right. Uh, number seven, the Bible teaches that Christian giving should be done in accordance with our means. So for those that have more, it would seem you should be able to give more uh, than those that maybe make less. Right. And so we don't expect that everybody is going to give in the same way or the same amount based no. on circumstances, income and all these things. But, but we're going to check them W-2s. No. <laughs> We don't even check the the giving records at our church. Like the, no, elders, the elders don't, don't even know that. We, yeah. we could if we wanted to. We've never done it. Not in ten years. We probably never will. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you, giving sacrificially looks different for different people. But that it is sacrificial and joyful. That's really the important part. Uh, number eight. The Bible teaches that the liberality of God's blessing to us is connected to the liberality of our Christian giving. Um, so if you have received a lot. You ought to be giving a lot. Yeah. And and if yeah. you are sowing little, now let's make it a relative situation. If you're sowing little, you're going to reap little. There'll be uh if you're if you're giving a lot, commensurate with your ability. Yep. Right? Not with that's other the important part right there. It's right? always I guess it's it's a lot for you, not a lot for somebody else. As you're doing that, you can certainly expect um uh, the grace of God to flourish in your life because he does respond to the faithfulness of his people in various ways. Number nine, the Bible teaches that Christian giving must be willing giving, right. free giving. So it's nothing that, that you're compelled or someone's forcing you to do. You're not doing it under compulsion. You're right. doing it freely and willingly, sacrificially, and I think joyfully. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just took that last one. No, that's all right. Number 10 is cheerful, but I was just like, I'm just trying to think what we talk about, what we do on, uh, yeah, we when, all, we, when we share about it. It's like, it's sacrificial and it's joyful. Actually, and it's, it's, it's good that you point that out. When, when we take up the offering, we don't just say, all Give right, people. Uh, here are the plates, throw some money in there. We actually talk about the principle and yeah. we have a different series of people that do this, but they will talk about the principle of giving in scripture. They'll read from a passage. It's a part of our liturgy. Yeah. So when they yep. read from a passage of scripture and exhort the people to give, they themselves are giving in the midst of that. So that's, um, that's important. And then, yeah, like you said, uh, his 10th point is that the Bible teaches Christians, Christian giving ought to be cheerful giving. Yeah. That God loves a cheerful giver. So you really got to evaluate yourself or I have to evaluate my heart. Is my heart joyful as I am giving to the work of God? Now, maybe it's not bitter, but maybe it's disconnected. Maybe I'm, maybe if you can't rejoice in your offering to the church, then you are missing out on all of these things that Legan has been talking, talking yeah. about, right? That you're, you know, you're, you're giving to the Father and you're following Jesus. And you're, I mean, all of these things are amazing. You should be filled with joy for what you are able to give by the stewardship of God. Yeah, I mean, I remember a point when, uh, for Michelle and I in our marriage early on, when I was uh, in ministry, we couldn't afford, like, we just couldn't tithe. I wasn't, we weren't making enough. I wasn't making enough. She was in school full time where to even make an offering. Yeah, she's paying. She's, yeah. she's paying to go to school. She's and not, I couldn't get, I was living off donations because of my status in Canada, they, I couldn't get paid. Right. And so people were just like showing up with groceries, taking care of bills, all that stuff. And I remember the day that I got a paycheck. And we were actually able to to like give it to the offering. It was powerful. Are you gonna cry? St I hate oh my you gosh! So much. You're gonna cry again, dude. You're about to cry. <laughs> no, 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 no! You're about to cry, Joe. Right there. Oh, Look, <laughs> there's a spider. <laughs> it's running up. <laughs> well, while Joe's running. <laughs> You're gonna tell him what's going on. There's a, okay, oh Joe is God. afraid of spiders. Oh. I should have let it keep going down a little bit more. A spider started going crawling down from the ceiling oh and was gonna gosh. land oh <laughs> right next gosh. to him. 
Oh, uh, I deserve it. You deserve it. You. you deserve it. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter oh. at Doc and oh. or on oh. Facebook slash Dr. Oh. Devotion. Oh. <laughs> you can head on the website, drmoach.com. There oh. you can sign up for our email Where's blast. It's, it's up there, man. Sign up for our email blast. You can contact us or hit up the store and sign up for the Dr. Devotion Conference 2018 of the Spirit yes. and the Church. Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog posts on Wednesdays. Video content on Fridays. Oh, and speaking of which, new, new, oh, hurry up new. Oh, thing. No, I want to say that in January, we're unveiling our new website. Everything. We, right, we got a right, bunch right. of new stuff. All right, all right, all right. All right. Later. All right, dude. It's gone. No, it's up there. You got to kill it. I'm not killing you. I'm telling you right now, I'm leaving. Are you really going to leave? 100%. percent no, you're not. 100%. Stop being a baby. 100%. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding at all. Come on. You're going to kill that spider. Stop it. You're going to kill that spider. He gone.